Debian. Of all the Linuxes, it may just be the Linuxiest. Modern Debian runs on just about anything, from the servers that make up the backbone of the internet to extremely outdated platforms that nerds like me insist on running, like a 1998 Jeep Cherokee. So today, let's install the latest version of Debian 12 on these two decade old Power Macs and see just how usable we can make this long abandoned architecture for 2024 computering. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy taking long dead computing platforms and resting them from their peaceful slumber with the ruthless installation of Linux, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So we've actually done quite a bit of modern Linux installing on ancient Power Macs on this channel, and there are very few Linux distros that maintain support for the Mac PowerPC platform. And when they do, we usually have to jump through a bunch of hoops to get it to work, and this was even the case in Debian 11, which we made a video on last year. That required exiting the installer and fixing the install in the command line to get the thing booting. Well, I'm pretty sure the Debian SID 12 installer just works. So I've got two PowerPC Macs here, which we're gonna try to install modern Debian on. In the 64-bit corner, we have a quad-core Power Mac G5, the absolute fastest 64-bit Power Mac ever released. And I've got a one gigahertz iMac G4, iconic, though quite a bit slower. Now, I already have an SSD in the G5 in place of its original spinning hard drive, but I'd like to toss one in this iMac too to give it the best possible chance of having a usable experience. So let's do a little iMac surgery. So the iMac G4 is slightly annoying to upgrade uh, because everything is sandwiched into the base here, but it's really not that bad. Yeah, these are all captive screws. And there's our hard drive stuck onto the top of the optical drive. And in place of that, I want to go with this DOS Dude drive, which is actually an IDE native SSD. I think this is 512 gigs. All right, I've got a nice 3D printed case here that I've modified slightly to say DOS do rules because he does. And that will fit in there quite nicely. And while we're in here, we'll max out the memory, which is actually kind of interesting. Comes with a 256 megabyte desktop stick up here. And I'll swap in this 512 megabyte PC 2700 memory, which is actually the same RAM that the later G4 towers used. Replace this old crusty battery while we're at it. And then how weird is this? The iMac G4 takes both desktop and laptop memory modules, one of each. All right, I've got the Debian 12 net installer ISOs for both 64 and 32 bit here. Let's do a side-by-side -side install on these two machines, right after this quick word about today's sponsor, Aura. Remember when we were kids and adults told us not to give strangers on the internet our personal information? Well, today the internet is basically comprised of strangers who have our personal information. Just do a quick Google search for your name or email. You probably have a pretty shocking amount of personal information out there. And weirdo data brokers sweep up this information and sell it to spammers, shady advertisers, even scammers. Enter Aura. Using Aura, I can see which data brokers are selling my information and opt-out requests are automatically submitted for me. As someone who broadcasts his basement out to the wider internet, privacy is important to me. Aura not only reduces spam, but reduces my exposure to threats that I can't even see, like online ne'er-do-wells who might try to use that information for nefarious purposes. 
So check out Aura. It's really easy to set up and covers you with things like antivirus, VPN, password management, identity, theft insurance, and more, all at one affordable price. I value my privacy and I know you value yours, so go to aura.com slash action retro to start a free two week trial or click the link in my description below. Okay, so I have the 64-bit Debian net install ISO loaded up here on the G5, and I held down option at startup to get to the boot picker. Let's see if this really does just work. All right, default install. Check it out, we booted right into the install, no issues. So English, United States, American English, detecting hardware. For host name, I'm gonna call this the Debian G5. Root password will be strong and secure. We will use the entire disk. Yep, there's my 512 gig SSD. For the mirror, we'll choose Germany, deb.debian.org. Now we can pick desktop environments. We have to choose Debian desktop, and then I'm gonna choose XFCE. All right, now we're installing the bootloader. This is where Debian 11 would fail. We'd have to back out into a terminal and fix it manually. But I see it configuring Grub now. Look at that, install complete. All right, well, if this actually just boots directly into Debian, <laughs> I'm gonna be absolutely amazed. Ho, 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 look at that. It went right into Grub. Wow, and we very quickly got to the login prompt here. Okay, before we poke around too much in here, I'm gonna do the same install on the G4 and I'll report back if there are any issues. <laughs> Look at that, an iMac G4 running modern Debian Linux. That is wild. Even more wild that it just freaking worked. All right, I've left this running for a while and it is not crashed or frozen at all. And look at that, kernel 6.6.11 .6 for 32-bit PowerPC. All right, let's start out by exploring Debian on the G5 so we can get an idea of what this is like in the best possible scenario. <laughs> and here we are, usable desktop. That, that is mighty impressive. There do seem to be some graphical glitches though. Let's run our updates here. Oh yeah, did you see that graphical glitch? And checking NeoFetch here, we can see our 16 gigs of RAM, the GeForce 6600, which might actually be an opportunity for an upgrade, running kernel 6.6.11 on our four PowerPC 970 MP 2.5 gigahertz cores. So that's two CPUs with two cores each. All right, let's see what kind of software we have installed here. By default, this is the net install, so it should be pretty sparse. We have some LibreOffice stuff, Ristretto Image Viewer, Firefox is installed, the Parole Media Player, all the LibreOffice stuff. Yeah, pretty slim, just the way it should be. Of course, let's try Firefox. And it doesn't launch. All right, let's see. Run it from the terminal. Segmentation fault. Now, this is something that you're gonna find if you install this for yourself. A lot of the software will be automatically compiled, but it won't be tested for this architecture. So let me get a browser which will work. All right, Conqueror does load, uh, but it froze. Son of a gun. Okay, so I have installed the Dillo browser, which Good old Dillo browser works on just about anything. And I'm going to add the Power Progress third-party repository. And now I can install Arctic Fox, which is a web browser based on Firefox and compiled specifically for this platform. All right, and check it out. Here is beautiful Arctic Fox which is a very modern web browser and I think should work 
fairly well on here because this is a quad core system with 16 gigs of RAM. All right, of course I have to check YouTube. And Arctic Fox defaults to the mobile version of YouTube for the sake of speed. Let's check out a video from your friend of mine, Steve from Mackety4. It's trying. Okay, so rock solid might be a little bit of an understatement. I have gotten two freezes now where the interface is completely unresponsive, but my mouse still works. Oh, look at that. This is real deal modern Debian running on an architecture that's been all but abandoned for 20 years. That is amazing. And honestly, shockingly, it is fairly responsive. Just look at that. NeoFetch catching our whole 1.5 gigs of RAM. This thing has an NVIDIA GeForce MX with AGP 8X, pretty nice. And we of course have our single 7455 CPU running at 999 megahertz. <laughs> All right, pop into HTOP. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Well, our CPU is actually only sitting at 9.3% utilization. And uh, yeah, that goes to show you how good XFCE is. If we move the window around here, it pops up to like <laughs> 50%. But still, this is a 2024 operating system and desktop environment running on, again, an abandoned architecture from 20 years ago. You know, we've got some accessories, Thunar file manager, which is quite nice. You know, I'm also noticing that there are no graphical glitches other than just screen redraw taking a second. So I wonder if the G5 is just down to the video card. Let's see what web browser we have. <laughs> I clicked on web browser and it opened the terminal. <laughs> uh, I guess we don't have a web browser installed. <laughs> All right, well, sudo apt install dillo yeah there we go dillo browser <laughs> look how fast that loads up that's amazing i was even using dillo on a g3 imac running open bsd pretty amazing all right yeah so i'm just like messing around with this and it is shockingly responsive i cannot believe how well this is working uh i'm unarchiving a zip file with X Archiver, uh, <laughs> had it at 100% pegged the whole time. Yeah, check it out. I'm really multitasking the heck out of it. I'm downloading files, extracting a BZ2 archive. I've got stuff running in the terminal. Again, CPU's pegged at 100%, but we're only using 264 megs of RAM. This is going pretty well. All right, I downloaded Arctic Fox. There is a build for PowerPC 32-bit Linux, and look at this. It runs fairly great. I mean, it's never going to be super fast, but this one gigahertz G4 is kind of keeping up. Just looking at the CPU usage, of course, pegged at 100% while we're doing stuff. But look much more responsive than I was expecting. Dare we try YouTube? Let's try. And of course it's loading the mobile version of the site, which is how Arctic Fox is designed. But it's putting up a valiant effort here. <laughs> oh my God, it's loading the ads, of course. Okay, so maybe watching YouTube videos is a bit out of the question, but the browser hasn't frozen. It just uh, has not loaded the video. Hacker News, this website loads on just about anything. And of course, something like the good old Macintosh Garden. It's gonna work great. So yeah, serviceable, if not totally stable web browsing. That's pretty sweet. All right, and if you thought you were gonna get out of here without me trying to run something Minecraft related on here, you thunk wrong because I am compiling Classic Cube. <laughs> Again, pegging this poor CPU at 100%. And we're going to see if this runs. And if so, what kind of horrible frame rate we get. I love it when compiling software just works. 
and it crashed. <laughs> All right, well, I went into this totally expecting it to be a painful experience trying to get this modern version of Debian running well on these machines. And I actually wound up having just a lot of fun. I can't believe how easy it was to install. I mean, it just worked. And we did have a bunch of problems on the G5 with graphical glitches and freezes, but I'm pretty sure that comes down to this graphics card. I'm not actually sure that the graphics card is fully working. I took the heatsink off and the thermal paste was really crusty. What really shocked me though is how well Debian runs in 32-bit on this extremely constrained system. 1.5 gigs of RAM, one gigahertz G4 32-bit, and it's awesome. I mean, you can web browse. Classic Cube could probably work with a little more tinkering. And yeah, I mean, in no way am I suggesting that this could be your new daily driver PC. That would be haiku. But just for tinkering around with Linux and playing some games and just having a good time, it's awesome. So if you have a PowerPC Mac and you've been meaning to dabble in Linux, give the Debian 12 SID net install ISO a shot because it just works. But that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Linuxy shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman 1, Alex Hoffman 2, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Out Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Eric Shields, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George F. Rosansky, Greg from Prep Game Mods, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Papaz, Jason Azell, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.